Retire on your own terms. That's the topic of today's video. Hi, if you're new to this channel, I am Margaret Milutinovic from Financial Goddess, your business and finance expert. And on this channel, we talk about all things financial empowerment. Welcome. And if you're one of our existing subscribers, a very warm welcome back. So, Today we are continuing our discussion in this series about retiring on your own terms. In my previous videos, I talk about the misconception of um, the legal retirement age and the requirements. We also look at the self-managed super fund. In today's part, in part three, we are going to talk about other ways that you can retire early if you choose to. So from my previous videos, you would have learned that the retirement age for an old aged pension um, or the retirement benefits as it's otherwise known varies from countries anywhere between 62 and 70 years of age. In Australia, you have an option of self-managed super fund, but for that you're not eligible until the age of 60. So what happens if you don't want to work up until the age of 60 or if your health doesn't allow you to? What happens if you simply want to retire early? How can you do that? Stay tuned to find out. Today, I want to talk to you about passive income streams. The legal requirement for getting old age pension is just that, it's the government requirement. There's nothing you can do about that. If you do have a self-managed super fund in Australia, the legal requirement for you to touch that money is 60. However, if you want to retire before the age of 60, the good news is you can. You can retire at any age that you choose to. But in order to do that, in order to retire and stop exchanging your time for money, you need to be able to have enough income coming through to meet your day-to-day -day expenses and to be able to live the lifestyle that you want to live. So one of the ways to do that is while you're still working to focus on investing into things that will generate you passive income streams. So focusing on smart investments. When you get that paycheck after you pay your essential expenses, if you have enough disposable income left, you have choices. You can choose to put that money into your savings account. At the current rates, that return is lower than inflation, so you're actually losing value. You can choose to reward yourself and buy a, um, a nice handbag or go on holidays or go out to a restaurant, get your hair done, get your nails done, whatever it is that you fancy. Or you can choose to invest most of the disposable income left into assets that would help you to grow your wealth and will help you to reach that financial freedom that you're seeking. A lot of people mistaken buying a car as an asset. Yes, in a way it is, but for most people really, it's a depreciating asset. The moment you drive out of the dealership, it just depreciated 30%. It's not an asset that is going to generate you income, it's an asset that's going to chew away your money because of the car maintenance, insurance, registrations. It's not gonna generate you income unless you're buying a car strictly for income producing purposes and most people don't you use the car to get to and from work and for social and enjoyable activities so it's not really a true asset in a way that it's going to help you to grow your wealth the types of assets that you need to focus on investing on is assets that will bring you revenue that will continue to give you passive revenue for example real estate investments. That's a good example of 
passive income stream. Whether you're buying a commercial property or whether you're buying a residential property, you experience two ways of wealth growth through that one asset. So the first one is the capital growth. You have a purchase price and over at least a period of 10 years, that asset will increase in value. That property is going to sell for more money than what you bought it for. So you experience the capital growth. At the same time, in that commercial or residential property, somebody will be paying you rent. That rent is your passive income. When you have that passive income coming through, you'll be incurring expenses. So your body corporates, insurances, real estate fees, and then you'll have your net rental return. And that net rental return becomes your passive income stream. Now, as with every form of investment, it starts small. But then that passive income stream that you have, if you save it enough and continue to add to it from your working disposable income, soon enough you might be able to buy another real estate property and another one. And then your wealth continues to grow until eventually you have enough net rental income coming through, through your real estate investments, that it completely just replaced your working wages. Another form of passive income is through investing in the stock market, especially in uh, dividends, in the stocks that are producing dividends. I touched on that in my previous videos, but it's important to consider, it's not for everyone, but it's an important methodology and one of the highest returning yields in the wrong term if you know what you're doing. Personally, I love stocks that give me dividends because it's money that perpetually continues to increase. A lot of companies allow you to reinvest those dividends on automatic plans. I would encourage you to tick it. Tick off that box and go through automatic dividend reinvestment plan and continue to do that until you get to the point where you actually do want to retire and want to live off dividends. Because if you allow the dividends to just go into your bank account, it can be quite tempting not to spend it. It's like free money goes into your account and maybe you want to reward yourself. And then all you have is that your principal money that you invested. To really speed up the process of wealth creation and to really be able to get to the point of reaching financial freedom and retiring on your own terms, you need to reinvest the dividend income. And the way that it works, simply rather than you getting cash in whatever the dividend you'll be entitled to, you get the equivalent in more shares in that same company. And then those more shares further in return become eligible for dividends. And dividends is simply a company's profit share to you. On average, that's about 4%. Personally, I do not touch anything below 7%. And I look for stocks that over the coming years, the level of dividends is supposed to increase. So what I would encourage you to do, and I understand um, it can be overwhelming if that's not your area of expertise, I would encourage you to either seek an expert advice and help you with picking stocks or invest in a software that allows you to do that. So I'm personally using Halo Technologies, but there's other um, software providers that you can use to get all this analytics coming through. And also, I would encourage you, take your time to learn the skills because they help you long term. Rather than sitting there and playing silly games on your phone or watching some Netflix videos or just staring at an empty TV box, do yourself a favor and invest in your future. Your future self will thank you for it. Spend that time watching videos, tutorials, and courses on learning how to read the stock market, how to analyze those shares so you can make those investments. So these would be my two top ways 
to help you create passive income streams. There are others. There is government bonds, there is term deposits, uh, you've got cryptocurrencies, you've got uh, Forex, which is the foreign exchange you can trade in foreign currencies. There is a lot of different ways. Um, there's also a lot of get rich quick schemes out there, including here on YouTube. Please be wary, there is no such thing. Focus on the sure thing. For me, my favorite investments for passive income is through real estate and it's through stock. And I don't look at the short term fluctuations in the market, I completely ignore those because I'm in there long term. And think about it realistically. If right now you're in your 20s and you buy some stock, who cares what that stock is doing in this 12 months. Who cares if that stock drops by 50%? The only time you lose money is if you actually sell it, if you panic and sell it at that 50% loss. Bam, you lost your money. Other than that, if you leave that stock alone because you know that this is part of your retirement plan and you're not planning to retire for 10 or 20 years, who cares what it's done in 12 months? What you're looking at is the trajectory for that stock over a period of at least 10 years. And what you're looking at is your overall return on that stock. So if you look at your cumulative return, say the $1,000 that you invested, and then you look on top of that on the compound impact of the reinvested dividend over 10 years, and you look at it, the overall capital growth of what that share is now worth 10 years later, What's the share price? That is the wealth that you have created. Now imagine consistently investing, which is very important. Imagine every single paycheck having the discipline to put that money aside. Every single paycheck, no excuses, no ifs, no buts, no maybes, unless there is a real life emergency. Imagine doing that consistently for 10 years, now from the time you're in your 20s until you reach your 30s, or if you're in your 30s until you reach your 40s. That is the surest way to reach that financial freedom and to be able to retire on your own terms. Because what you're doing effectively is you're building up that passive income to the level where the money coming from your rental income and the money coming from your dividends is enough to cover your day-to-day -day expenses. It's enough to cover the lifestyle that you want where you no longer have to work. If you want to work, you can. If you enjoy your job, you can, but you can reduce the hours from full-time to part-time. Or if you no longer want to work, you don't work. If you want to spend six months traveling the world, you can. And that is what it truly means to be able to retire on your own terms. Now, I'm sure you heard of the FIRE movement. And in this video, I'll be reviewing it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you real soon.